From the flash of the stage to the silent bank accounts, many rock stars have danced on the edge of financial disaster. This video will rock through tales of 20 legends whose fortunes faded faster than their fame, showing a symphony of mismanaged wealth and costly mistakes. Celebrated for his romantic ballads, Marvin Gaye faced tumultuous personal and financial times. Married in 1963 to Barry Gordy's sister, Anna Gordy, their relationship was marred by accusations of abuse and infidelity, leading to their separation in 1973 and divorce in 1977. Ordered to pay 600 grand in alimony, Gay struggled financially, exacerbated by lavish spending and a decline in his music career's commercial success. Facing bankruptcy, he agreed to give the royalties from his 1978 album to Gordy, which did little to alleviate his financial burden. Despite a career revival with the 1982 album Midnight Love, Gay still owed Gordy nearly 300 grand at his death in 1984. Mick Fleetwood The iconic drummer of Fleetwood Mac experienced a financial roller coaster that's as legendary as his music. Regardless of being a cornerstone of one of the most successful bands in history, Fleetwood's finances crumbled under the weight of extravagant spending and a notorious addiction to coke. His financial downfall is a story of excess and poor management, which saw him declare bankruptcy in 1984 due to nearly 3.7 mil in debts, significantly outweighing his assets. Fleetwood's journey into financial instability began with his immense success with Fleetwood Mac, a band known for its musical prowess and its members' extravagant lifestyles. Because of not writing any of the band's hits and consequently earning less than his bandmates, Fleetwood still managed to amass a considerable fortune. However, his lack of attention to his finances and failure to save led to his downfall. He once admitted to being blessed with cartloads of money, but never bothered to save any of it, leading to multiple instances of bankruptcy. A significant portion of his fortune was lost to an expensive habit that became all too common among famous faces in the 70s and 80s. Coke. Fleetwood and his bandmates' post-show ritual often included using coke, with Fleetwood consuming a staggering amount that he believed could stretch seven miles long if laid out in a single line. This addiction contributed significantly to his financial woes, with an estimated $60 million spent on the drug. Beyond drugs, Fleetwood's whimsical investment in a thousand-acre farm in Australia during the early 1980s marked another financial misstep. The farm, which included multiple houses and a fishing lake, cost him about three mil. This venture, described by Fleetwood as a pipe dream, eventually led him to financial ruin. In spite of the losses, Fleetwood took the experience in stride, acknowledging the beauty of the venture but also recognizing its role in his path to bankruptcy. Today, Fleetwood's recovered from his financial lows and is estimated to be worth around 30 mil. However, this is a modest sum compared to the potential fortune he could have amassed without his financial mismanagement and extravagant spending. For David Crosby, it wasn't just the lifestyle, but deep-seated addiction that led to his downfall. But let's talk about George Clinton first, and then we'll see how his journey unfolds. Funk pioneer George Clinton faced financial hardships in the 1980s, primarily due to disputes over song rights with Bridgeport Music. His bankruptcy filing in 1985, which omitted songs written from 1976 to 1983 as assets, led to a legal battle over copyrights valued at over $100 million. Clinton, alleging fraud in his bankruptcy filing, sold song rights in 2010 to pay legal debts, continuing his fight for his music's ownership. David Crosby a pivotal figure in folk rock and psychedelic music, soared to fame with The Birds and later with Crosby, Stills & Nash, or CSN, is selling over 35 million albums. Significant achievements, including a Grammy for Best New Artist with CSN and induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame twice, marked his journey through the music industry. Crosby's life took a tumultuous turn due to drug addiction and legal troubles. 
Crosby's issues began to surface during a recording session for a Graham Nash album in 1980 where a severe crack addiction was evident. This addiction led to erratic behavior, including a notorious incident where he crashed into a fence while freebasing coke with a loaded gun in his car. His legal problems culminated in an attempt to flee to Costa Rica, resulting in his arrest and a period of detoxification in a Texas state prison. This period of incarceration proved to be a turning point, allowing Crosby to reflect on his life and begin the process of recovery. The financial repercussions of Crosby's lifestyle were severe. He filed for bankruptcy, overwhelmed by debts incurred from his drug addiction and the legal fees associated with his numerous arrests. The impact on his career was significant, with his record sales suffering as a result of his struggles. Even with these challenges, Crosby managed to revive his career, continuing to produce music and perform until his later years. David Crosby's struggle with addiction and financial ruin paints a vivid picture of talent. Next, let's talk about a few more names, and then we'll see how Meatloaf's album soared, uh, but his finances plummeted. Dee Snyder, the lead singer of Twisted Sister, encountered financial ruin in the 1990s due to a detrimental contract and the decline of glam metal. Snyder, who prided himself on his financial prudence, found himself struggling and shopping at thrift stores to make ends meet. He managed to rebuild his career by hosting a radio show, writing a successful Christmas song, and performing on Broadway. Harry Nielsen, a critically acclaimed musician, faced financial ruin in the 1980s, culminating in 1991 when he discovered his manager, Cindy Sims, had embezzled millions from him. Overnight, Nielsen went from financial security to bankruptcy, losing nearly everything. He passed away in 1994 after a struggle with heart failure. Meatloaf's Bad Outta Hell became a monumental hit after its release in 1977. It stands as one of the defining albums of the 70s. However, success did not shield Meatloaf, whose real name is Marvin Leaday, from financial turmoil. By 1983, he was bankrupt. The album's creation was a collaboration with composer Jim Steinman. Despite its eventual success, securing a label was initially challenging due to its unique style. Producer Todd Rundgren's involvement was crucial to its production. Global sales eventually soared to 43 million copies, even with a slow start, earning 14 platinum certificates in the U.S. The financial mismanagement, exacerbated by substance abuse, led to Meatloaf's downfall. He faced numerous lawsuits, including a significant one with Steinman, demanding $500 million. The pressures of fame, coupled with legal battles, overwhelmed him, leading to the loss of his house and song rights. Regardless of these challenges, Meatloaf's career rebounded with Bad Outta Hell 2 in 1993. The album's success, alongside his acting career, helped him recover financially. Meatloaf's story is a roller coaster, but Jerry Lee Lewis's tale takes us back to the roots of rock with a financial twist. First, we're gonna talk about Sly Stone. Then, let's see how the killer faced the music. Sly Stone, the frontman of Sly and the Family Stone, has suffered through extensive financial issues, including a long-standing IRS lien and costly drug addiction. He sold his publishing rights to cover debts and fought a legal battle against his former manager over royalty theft. The Stone's financial state led him to homelessness in 2011, but he won a $5 million lawsuit against his former manager in 2015. Jerry Lee Lewis, known as the killer for his fiery piano skills and wild stage persona, saw his career peak in the late 1950s with hits like Great Balls of Fire. However, his personal life and financial decisions led him down a rocky path. A major scandal involving his marriage to his 13-year-old cousin significantly derailed his career, reducing his earnings from $10,000 per night to a mere fraction of that sometimes not even making a hundred dollars a night. This drastic fall from grace was just the beginning of Lewis's financial troubles. By the late 60s, Lewis managed to revive his career in country music, but his financial woes continued, largely due to issues with the IRS.
In 1979, the IRS seized over 60 items from Lewis, including cars and musical equipment, for about 274 grand in back taxes. An auction of these items barely made a dent in what he owed. Being found innocent of tax evasion in 1984, the IRS continued to pursue Lewis, leading to further seizures. In 1988, overwhelmed by debts to the IRS and other creditors totaling over 3 mil, Lewis filed for bankruptcy. Despite these financial setbacks, Lewis's legacy in music remained untarnished. His estate, valued at around $10 million, reflects a significant recovery, showcasing his resilience and enduring popularity. Jerry Lee Lewis faced tough times, but Ted Nugent's wild investments are something else. Let's talk about John Oates, then let's explore his journey from bankruptcy to recovery. By 1987, despite Hall & Oates' massive record sales, John Oates was informed he was broke, a result of excessive spending and misplaced trust in his management. Oates criticized his handlers for not warning him of his unsustainable lifestyle. He eventually recovered financially, crediting the retrieval of unpaid royalties for his turnaround. Ted Nugent, known for his electrifying guitar solos and controversial opinions, faced financial turmoil in the 1980s despite a successful music career. He made a series of adventurous investments, including a mink farm, which led to his bankruptcy. Even with these setbacks, Nugent's financial situation has significantly improved over the years. In the late 70s and early 80s, Nugent enjoyed considerable success with his solo career releasing multi-platinum albums like Ted Nugent, 1975, A Free For All, 1976, and Cat Scratch Fever, 1977. His fame, however, did not safeguard him from financial difficulties. The investments he made during this period, notably in a mink farm and other ventures, did not yield the returns he'd hoped for. By 1980, these failed investments pushed Nugent to declare bankruptcy. Nugent managed to recover financially. His net worth as of 2021 is estimated to be around 10 mil. This recovery can be attributed to his continued success in music, diversified investments, and media appearances, including television shows and published books. Nugent's ability to bounce back from financial despair showcases his resilience and savvy business acumen. Up next, let's witness how the man behind Shaft got shafted by finances. Isaac Hayes, the soulful genius behind the hit Shaft, found himself in a financial quagmire that led him to bankruptcy. At the heart of Hayes' financial collapse was a combination of failed investments and the downfall of Stax Records, the label that had been instrumental in his rise to fame. Hayes, who had ventured into various investments, including a record label and a basketball team, faced a severe financial setback when these endeavors did not turn profitable. His situation worsened when Stax Records faced financial difficulties, leading to Hayes being unable to receive his royalties. This financial strain was compounded by his investments in a basketball team, which also failed to generate the expected returns. The culmination of these financial woes led to Hayes losing his home and the rights to most of his music, putting him in dire straits. He filed for bankruptcy in 1976, at a time when he was reportedly over $6 million in debt which included personal debts and medical expenses. Hayes managed to rebuild his career gradually thanks in part to his later success as an actor and his continued influence in the music industry. Isaac Hayes had his highs and lows, but Cindy Lauper's early struggles show true grit. First, let's talk about Rocky Erickson, then stick around to hear how she turned bankruptcy into a chart-topping career. Rocky Erickson, leader of the 13th Floor Elevators, faced financial and personal turmoil after a 1969 arrest for marijuana possession. Choosing to plead insanity, he was institutionalized and underwent severe treatments, which led to financial mismanagement. Erickson's career saw revival in the 1990s, lasting until his death in 2019. Before Cyndi Lauper became the iconic figure known for anthems like Girls Just Wanna Have Fun, she faced significant financial and personal challenges, 
Her early career with the band Blue Angel did not bring the success she'd hoped for, leading to financial difficulties. A lawsuit from their former manager claiming 80 grand pushed Lopper into bankruptcy in 1983. Lopper's struggle did not end with her bankruptcy. She encountered numerous hardships, including working menial jobs to make ends meet. Her undeniable talent and resilience led to a turning point when she met David Wolf, who became her manager. This partnership was pivotal, leading to the recording of her debut solo album, She's So Unusual, in 1983. This album was a commercial success, selling 6 million copies in the United States and totaling 13 million worldwide, marking a significant turnaround in her fortunes. Lover's journey from bankruptcy to pop stardom underscores the unpredictable nature of the music industry and the potential for redemption through hard work and talent. Similar to Cindy Lauper, Tom Petty's battle for artistic freedom through bankruptcy demonstrates a different kind of financial savvy. Let's see how he used the law to his advantage. Tom Petty's fight against his record label showcases not only his musical genius, but also his business acumen. In 1978, when Shelter Records, the label behind Petty's first two albums, was sold to MCA, Petty found himself in a contractual bind that heavily favored the label at his expense. Unwilling to accept the terms that diminished his earnings and control over his music, Petty took a stand that was unprecedented at the time. Petty had a clause in his contract that required Shelter to consult him before selling his contract to another label. When MCA acquired ABC Records, Petty saw this as a breach of contract and decided to challenge the music industry status quo. His bold move involved declaring bankruptcy, a strategic decision that put him over half a million dollars in debt, but effectively voided his oppressive contract. Petty's understanding of bankruptcy law, which nullifies existing contracts, allowed him to renegotiate his terms with MCA under more favorable conditions. This legal battle was costly, both financially and emotionally, leading Petty and his band to embark on a lawsuit tour to cover their legal expenses. However, this gamble paid off spectacularly with the release of Damn the Torpedoes, which became a triple platinum success and solidified Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers' place in rock history. This album, along with Petty's subsequent hits, proved that an artist with a loyal fan base and the courage to stand up for their rights could change the dynamics of their relationship with record labels. Tom Petty fought for his rights, but Willie Nelson's showdown with the IRS is legendary. Up next, see how the outlaw country star dealt with his tax troubles. Willie Nelson's entanglement with the IRS is a significant chapter in his legendary music career. In the early 1980s, Nelson's investments in an illegal tax shelter backfired, leading to a staggering $32 million debt to the IRS by 1990. This financial debacle resulted from both the failed investments and the cumulative penalties and interest on unpaid taxes. Nelson's situation became so dire that the IRS seized his assets, including properties, recording equipment, and personal items. However, Nelson's spirit remained unbroken, and he sought innovative ways to settle his debts. In a creative twist, Nelson released the IRS tapes, Who Will Buy My Memories, in 1991, a unique album sold directly to help pay off his IRS debt. The effort, alongside a lawsuit Nelson filed against his accounting firm, Price Waterhouse, which he blamed for the tax debacle, showcased Nelson's resilience. The accounting firm had directed Nelson into the questionable tax shelters that led to his financial ruin. The lawsuit and the album's proceeds were steps toward financial recovery, although the album alone did not cover the debt. Nelson's ability to settle his IRS debts by 1993 was aided by the lawsuit's outcome and other projects. Nelson's saga with the IRS also highlighted his widespread popularity and the support he received from fans and friends. Notably, the buyer of Nelson's Texas ranch at an IRS auction was a Nelson fan who intended to return the property to him, a gesture of goodwill reflecting Nelson's impact beyond music. Next, Leonard Cohen's financial betrayal is deeply personal. Keep listening to learn how trust turned into treachery for this music icon. Leonard Cohen, a revered figure in the music world, found himself in a dire financial situation that reads like a cautionary tale of trust misplaced. 
For years, Cohen had entrusted his financial affairs to Kelly Lynch, his manager, a relationship that spanned nearly two decades. Lynch, who had ascended from an assistant to Cohen's then-manager in 1988, became a central figure in Cohen's professional and personal life, even being named in his living will. The unraveling began when Cohen was alerted by an insider to significant discrepancies in his accounts, leading to the discovery that almost all of his retirement savings had vanished, leaving him with a mere 150 grand. The legal battles that ensued revealed a complex web of deceit, where Lynch had diverted around 8.4 mil from Cohen's holdings. Cohen's initial trust in Lynch, who had vast powers of attorney over his accounts, turned into a profound betrayal as he realized the extent of the embezzlement. Cohen's legal and financial turmoil was exacerbated by the involvement of Neil Greenberg, an investment advisor introduced by Lynch. Greenberg's management of Cohen's money under the guise of protecting it from taxes contributed to the loss of Cohen's retirement funds. Despite Greenberg's claims of warning Cohen about his depleting funds, the communication seemed to have been intercepted or ignored by Lynch, keeping Cohen in the dark about his financial ruin. This financial catastrophe forced Leonard Cohen out of his retirement and back onto the touring circuit. Remarkably, this return to live performance not only helped Cohen recover financially, but also rejuvenated his career, bringing his music to new generations of fans. Cohen's story, while fraught with betrayal and financial disaster, ultimately showcases his resilience and the enduring appeal of his artistry. Coming up, we'll take a look at Courtney Love's battle with mismanagement and loss. Courtney Love's financial journey is a roller coaster that combines the pitfalls of sudden fame, poor financial management, and personal struggles. After inheriting a significant portion of Kurt Cobain's estate, including lucrative writing and publishing rights valued at around $245 million, Love faced a series of financial missteps and legal battles that dwindled her fortune. Even with the chance for financial security, Love claimed to have lost a substantial amount, estimating around $30 million in cash and $500 million in real estate due to inadequate financial management and predatory practices by those she entrusted. Love's battle with addiction and her admission to overspending tied to her addiction issues and further complicated her financial situation. This candid acknowledgement highlights the complex interplay between personal demons and financial mismanagement, underscoring the importance of sound financial advice and personal accountability. Moreover, Love found herself entangled in legal disputes, including a prolonged battle over Cobain's iconic guitar, adding to her financial and emotional strain. Love's net worth as of 2021 is estimated at $100 million, showcasing her resilience and ability to maintain a significant fortune amid adversity. Next, we'll talk about the MC5, but after that, we'll see how even family can lead to a financial downfall. The MC5, a band known for their revolutionary stance and garage rock sound, has struggled with commercial success, leading to bankruptcy amid debts from failed album sales, promoter and agent fees, and personal drug habits. The band dissolved in 1972 but saw a resurgence in interest during the 1990s. Now, Billy Joel's tale is up, showing a different kind of financial mistake. Billy Joel the legendary piano man faced a financial nightmare that serves as a warning for artists everywhere. His trust in his brother, Frank Weber, for financial management led to a disastrous outcome. In 1989, Joel filed a lawsuit against Weber for a massive $90 million, accusing him of fraud and breach of financial duty. The heart of the lawsuit was Joel's claim that Weber had misused $10 million of his money. Weber allegedly invested this in ventures that benefited his own companies, without Joel's consent. These investments were diverse and risky, ranging from oil and gas tax shelters to horse breeding farms and real estate partnerships. Weber's financial mismanagement didn't stop there. He was accused of double billing Joel for music video productions and inflating expenses for travel and accounting. The lawsuit also revealed that Weber mortgaged Joel's copyrights for $15 million behind his back, 
all while earning $20 million in commissions from Joel's income. Joel's legal battle aimed to recover 30 mil in compensatory damages for the funds Weber allegedly diverted, along with 60 mil in punitive damages for the years of deceit he endured. However, the outcome was far from what Joel had hoped for. Weber's bankruptcy led to a settlement out of court, leaving Joel with only about $8 million. As we've seen through the highs and lows of rock star finances, fame is fleeting and financial wisdom is priceless. These stories not only highlight the importance of smart money management, but also remind us of our ability to overcome life's financial storms. Ready for more eye-opening revelations? Check out Dumbest Ways NBA Players Went Broke and see how sports stars sail over their financial challenges.